Twin. Now, here's your host, Marla Brooks. Hey, Mary Mead, everybody, and welcome to Stirring the Cauldron once again here on the Para-X Radio Network. If you've ever wondered where we go after we cross over, we're going to be talking about that tonight with my guest, Echo Bodine. Now, Echo discovered at the age of 17 that she had psychic abilities and the gift of healing, and her abilities include clairvoyance, the gift of seeing, clairaudience, the gift of hearing, and clairsentience, the gift of sensing. She studied psychic development for several years and learned about the gift of healing from her spirit guides and through prayer and meditation. Her work has been featured in major newspapers and magazines, and she's appeared on several national television shows, including Beyond with James Von Prague, The View, NBC's Later Today, Sally Jesse Raphael, Sightings, Encounters, The Other Side, Coast to Coast, and a whole lot more. And she's also served as a consultant in the film industry to companies such as Paramount Pictures. She lectures throughout the country on intuition, spiritual healing, life, death, and life after death, and also offers workshops through the center, her teaching and healing center in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And let's not forget her books, of which there are many. And last time she was on my show, we talked about her latest book, What Happens When We Die. And tonight we're going to be keeping that theme and talk about life on the other side. So, Echo, welcome back. Hello, darling. It's nice to be here with you. Oh, oh we're cool. Gonna, we're going to talk about some good stuff tonight. And you know, oh, there, Yeah, it's, it's my favorite thing to talk about. I love it. <laughs> There were so many things that we didn't have enough time to get to last time you were here. And we didn't really specifically talk about life on the other side. We talked about dying, the process of what happens with this and that. So tonight I really want to delve into that because we've all heard, you know, a hundred different versions of what it's like over there. But Mm -hmm. I think we're going to start out with a question about getting there. So. When you were here the last time, you spoke about the fact that when your mother was getting close to passing, you Mm -hmm. and she had many out-of-body experiences, and you accompanied her to the other side to get things in order for her new life. Mm -hmm. So in essence, you've been there, and you know that there's truly a tunnel, a white light, a place called heaven, but some Mm -hmm. people don't always find that when they pass. I mean, I had a friend who was pronounced dead from a heart attack, but he was brought back. And he said during that time, he was clinically dead. He saw nothing, no bright light, no tunnel, just darkness, which led him to worry that there is no heaven and no afterlife. And mm-hmm. I'm sure you've heard the same thing before as as well. So in your opinion, why do some people see a beautiful world and don't even want to come back when they're told it's not their time, while mm-hmm. others don't see anything? You know, I think for, and this is just my my thoughts on this, but I, I uh, what I'm thinking is that uh, for some people, you know, when I when I have been allowed to go over there and then come back here, it is, oh gosh, Marla, it's like, you know, it's like taking a child to a circus and they get to glance behind the curtain and then they have to go back home and that's that's what it's like when you get to go to heaven before it's your time and so I think for those folks who don't see anything it could simply mean that they're just not being shown because they are meant to come back you know there are people you know you and I've heard of lots of people who have near-death experiences and they get to you know see the light and they see their loved ones but I think for those folks who don't see it, I think almost it's a, kind of a blessing in disguise because it is really hard once you once you see that light and you remember because your soul, it's like, oh, wait a minute, I know this place, and your soul starts to remember home, it's really hard to come back here. So I think, I think that's what it is. I think those people are just being kept from seeing what's underneath the circus tent. Now, when you had your first out-of-body experience and went over there, you were a little hesitant about going. And and if I recall right, um, you really weren't sure what was going on at that moment. And somebody came in and kind of, your brother, I think, came in and talked you through it and said it was okay to go. But at one point, he also said, you know, you've got to come back now. So um, 
Yes. How how did that transpire? Because that must have been quite a shock for you. Because I think you you met your grandmother over there. I mean, it was just like things that we hear all along, but you were actually out of body and there. So let's talk a little bit about that. Oh, Marla, God, you've got a good memory, girl. Jeez. Um, <laughs> okay. It was Marla. Really, I see. I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, I. Okay, I did not understand. There, I, there, okay, there was a spirit in front of me, and she kept saying, come on, let's go, come on, let's go. But all I could see was the back of her head, and I had no idea who this was. And uh, my mind, my conscious mind, is saying, what is going on here, and why is the room all full of white light, and what's going on? And, um, Marla, I mean, really, it was adorable that my brother... I, I had a friend here, he was freaking out, and my spirit guide was the one that said, have your friend call Michael, your brother, and have him get over here right away. And, I mean, that alone is an impossibility. First of all, you can hardly ever get a hold of my brother, and secondly, to just say, yeah, would you get over here right away? That's, <laughs> you know, that just doesn't happen. But. Neil did call him, and uh, Michael walked in the front door, and he knew exactly what was going on. And wow! Uh, and he said, he said to Neil, he said, "My sister asked God if she could have more information about the other side, and so she's going to be allowed to go over." And he said, "I'm going to sit here and ground her body. I'm going to hold her hand, and..." Um, he said, you know, sis, it's okay. You can go now. And and the way my body was, I looked like Raggedy Ann. My body lo- was completely hunched over. And all I could see was this female spirit in front of me saying, come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Well, when Michael said, sis, you can go now, this spirit turned around and looked at me, and it was my soul. And right then, Marla, I... Uh, my soul just started to move, and I was in the tunnel, and oh my gosh, the tunnel was, it was so cool. It was like, um, remember in the old days when we could go to the airport, and we could actually go to the gate and wait for our loved ones to get off the plane? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, okay, well, that's what it looked like in the tunnel, was all these people um, waiting for their loved ones that were dying that day and were coming over and they were they were there with balloons they were there with uh, flowers uh they were excited there were like a whole families um standing in the tunnel waiting for their loved ones and then um uh there was just sometimes there was just one person waiting for someone and and the tunnel has a very interesting feeling to it it's a very inviting uh, it's like an energy that just pulls you in and it's like you just want to go and be there. And so um, I just started, I just kept moving through. And it was so interesting too because it was like my soul was completely in charge. She knew exactly where to go. She knew what to do. Um but my conscious mind, that's what was so interesting, was that my conscious mind was still very connected to me, what I was going through. And so my conscious mind, I can hear it, trying to figure this all out. And yet at the same time, my soul is just going ahead and, and doing her thing. And we were coming up to the light, and it was so bright. And I remember thinking, oh, my gosh, if I look into that light, I'm going to go blind. And then mm. before you knew it, I was in the light. I was through the light, and I came out on the other side. And that's when I saw my grandma standing there with her friend. And uh, her. And my grandma said, uh, "This is my granddaughter Echo." And the uh, her friend said, "Oh, you didn't tell me she was dying today." And my grandma said, "No, she's not dying. She's just visiting." And and so again, it's like. What is this really happening? And then, right then, Marla, this uh, very cool angel, literally floated up to me, and she said, "Come on, let's go. I have a lot to show you in a short amount of time." And so we just started moving. And the other thing that was cool too was she and I did not talk with our mouths. We just communicated 
uh, telepathically. So Mm -hmm. I would have a thought, you know, I'd think, oh, I wonder where we're going. And then she would just look over at me and I would hear her thoughts. She'd say, I'm taking you to the hospital. I want to show you the hospital. And so we went to this place and what was interesting was it looked like a, it looked like a little city. It was a huge hospital and, and it had this pink aura to the, the whole city. And mm-hmm. I remember thinking, um, okay, is this, is, is this place pink? And <laughs> thinking, where are we? And she just looked over at me and she sent the thought, uh, this is the pink place. This is where people come to heal. And there were people laying in the grass. Uh, the grass, Marla, I'm telling you, the colors over there are beyond anything that we see here. It, it, it's like when I got back here and I looked at all the colors, it's like everything's so muted here versus wow. over there. Everything's so crisp and um, <clears throat> the colors are just vibrant. And the green, I mean, the grass was just so lush green. And there were all these souls laying in the grass and they all just were laying there with their eyes closed and so again I had the thought you know what's going on here and she sent me back the thought and she said they come to this place to heal and uh, and then she showed me two different floors on the hospital in the hospital one was the second floor and there were rows and rows of beds in there and every bed had a caregiver just sitting on the bed waiting for someone to come and she said this is where the suicide souls go and so I just watched and I saw oh gosh I saw pictures of like angels who um, okay like somebody who overdosed from drugs and their soul was very knocked out from the high amount of drugs that their body took and I I saw this picture of angels carrying these souls to the hospital carrying them and taking them to the second floor and just laying them down in a bed and um, and then the angel said uh, there's a caregiver for each person that comes here and she said when they wake up and realize that uh, they, they completed their mission she said a lot of them freak out because they didn't really intend to do it they they it was a good thought but they didn't think that they would actually be able to carry it out and she said some of them are very groggy for quite a while and so the caregiver is there to help them understand what's going on okay it was fascinating to to just see it was a very, very well organized uh, place, and mm-hmm. and then um, she showed me the eighth floor, and I didn't see what went on any 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 anywhere else in the hospital. There were, but there were up on the eighth floor was that was for people who had physical disabilities and she said that they go there to the eighth floor and caregivers work with them to help them see themselves in a different way let's say somebody who's had uh, a leg amputated and so the caregivers there work with them to say okay now that was your physical body but your soul is whole and um, and they work with them to um, even help them change their thinking about how they think of themselves it's fascinating it is so, and, you know it's interesting, interesting. It's, I went into the whole thing um, no, I wanted to you to. Here? Yeah. I, well, no. I'm. I was just going to say, and then I want you to talk about coming back. But um, I've heard the same from a lot of people about the healing, about the hospitals. It's. It's. This isn't something that you know, like one person is saying, because you know, people are going to sit there and go, "Oh well, you know, that's one person's experience." But right. a very good friend of mine was um, the legendary psychic to the stars, Kenny Kingston, and. Mm-hmm. Um, he described the other side exactly as you are, down to the hospital, down to 
you know, the very last thing he he um he wrote a book one well he wrote many books but one was called I Still Talk To and it was all about his celebrities and people that he knew in this lifetime his clients and everything um he still talks to them on the other side and throughout the book he's talking about things just as you're talking about okay, um, okay. Well, and very- so i mean yeah i just i just kind of want to validate what you're saying because Exactly, exactly the same thing. Now, mm-hmm. you can go back That's, and tell us how you came back. <laughs> well, honey, that was really interesting, too, because, okay, so the journey, the whole journey was like 35 minutes, and we went to different places, and and then my brother said, sis, your body is really having a hard time. You've got to come back to your body. And, uh, and it, but I specifically, after seeing everything there, I was like, Marla, I was like, oh, no, there's no way nobody's making me go back. I'm staying here. And the angel said to me, we didn't allow you to come here just for your sake. You came here so that you can go back and you can tell people that there really is a heaven and you can give them an idea of what it's like. And she said, it's so much bigger than what I've been able to show you in this short amount of time. But you will be able to give them <clears throat> kind of a bird's eye view and just then my brother said sis you've got to come back your body is really having a hard time because the soul is like the battery for the body and so you take the whole soul out uh, and the body is just trying to kind of function on its own and um, he said my breathing was really labored and uh, oh anyway So I'm thinking to myself, no, I'm not coming back. Nobody can make me go back. I don't want to go back. And right then I saw over to the right, I saw a stairway. And so I had the thought, I wonder where that goes. And the angel said, it goes to the higher levels, but you're not ready yet to go to the higher levels. And right when she said that, my soul slammed back into my body that fast Mm. I mean I didn't even have to stop and think okay I better go now it wasn't like that at all my soul just knew okay the body's been empty for a long time I got to get back now and boom I was in my body it didn't hurt it didn't honey really it was just like it was like I blinked my eyes and woof there I was back in it was fascinating uh, you know, a lot of people say they slam back into their bodies and they're astral, tra- astral traveling, but I, I'm kind of thinking not necessarily for everybody. Now, I know this is going to be a question that maybe doesn't make sense, but I have to ask it anyway. Okay. Um, it, the answer may be so obvious that I should already know it, but but here it goes. Um, when we go out of body into the astral plane, yeah. um, if, if I'm not mistaken, it's our souls that are out there and then they come back. Yeah. And when we pass, our souls leave our bodies for good. So, mm-hmm. um, what I'm trying to make sense, but it may not. What's the difference? Is there a difference between the astral plane and the other side, or is the astral plane the other side itself? What people call heaven? No, honey. The astral plane is kind of the in between space where um, earthbound spirits hang out. So okay. it is. You know, like your friend that that had the near death experience, but only saw the darkness. The, it's dark in the astral plane. It's it's kind of like nighttime is really what it's like. And so, uh, uh, you know, when we when we astral project at night, um, we might go hang out on the astral plane. We might stay here on the earth plane and just jump over and. And uh, you know, run over to Hawaii and sit on the beach all night. But yeah. the yeah, the astral plane is it's just kind of a dark place. It is. It's a dark place, but it's it's not a bad place. It's just no. a uh, you know, it's uh, mm. <laughs> it's not a real fun places. hangout. You know, it's right. not. It's not okay. Well, I'm going to yeah. take that a step further because. Um, I just mentioned Kenny Kingston a minute ago. In his book, one of the chapters he wrote about dealt with Adolf Hitler. Okay. Which is, it was a horrible chapter. Um, but he Martha. said he said that Hitler is totally shunned by others on the other side. 
And he said that if anyone is ever in a state of limbo, it's Adolf Hitler. So during your any of your visits, did you come across a, a place like this, a place where certain spirits are exiled because of maybe who they were or what things they did here on Earth? Yeah, well, I guess limbo are, is the right word. Yeah, <clears throat> there's um, there's a community on the other side of people like Hitler, and so when they pass away, they go to that community. And can you imagine all those egomaniacs living together? Oh my God! <laughs> if they um, weren't dead, you'd think they'd kill each other, right? Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah. But that's what happens is that there's all these different communities over there, and each community reflects a different reality. And so the community where he went and Saddam Hussein, um, some of these these people that are just, uh, it is is this one uh, community, and it is not, you know, it's like you and I, it's one of those places you and I would probably never visit. Okay, we just would have absolutely no desire when we're over on the other side. Um, we would have no desire to, to go and visit it. it, it it's kind of like our consciousness. We would have to think that way uh, in order to be allowed to go into that community. And so they all live together. All the guys that have that kind of consciousness, belief system, they, they live together. Mm-hmm. Do they, do they, do you think they ever evolve? Because that's well, kind of the purpose of, you know, going there and evolving and moving on. But maybe yeah. some of them are just so stuck to who and what they are, they may not, right? Yeah, they are given opportunities. Uh, there will be teachers that will go in and talk to them about different different ways of thinking about things and, you know, about growing. But they can choose, you know, I mean, I would think somebody like Adolf Hitler would have uh, such an ego that he would never want to let go of being Adolf Hitler. And so that's where he's going to stay stuck is, no, this is me, you know, I'm the famous Adolf Hitler. And so it's going to take him a long, long time, I would guess, before he's willing to even think of life in a different way. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I she's you know, I, time frame. Yeah. I sometimes wonder, you know, if he were allowed to reincarnate, I wonder what that would be like. I, 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 I don't know. I, I just don't know what it would be like. Cause he, there's so many atrocities. It's like, how do you even pay off that karmic debt? I don't know. Well, that it, it also makes you wonder about, the serial killers and the horrible people, horrible people that are here now, you know, yep. what were they before? I mean, I've always heard that when we come back, we pretty much have the same DNA. Yeah. And okay. so we, it's not that we grow, you know, wings in a halo. If we're kind of snarky people, we usually remain snarky for a while until we learn better. So yeah, that's right. So if somebody like Hitler, you know, comes back. I think he's yeah. still personally not going to be a very nice man. I mean, I know. he may be he may be another Hitler coming back. I mean, and and that scares me. I mean, because people are always confusing like like grumpy spirits with really bad spirits, you yeah, know. But that's right. somebody, you know, some guy that some person. I'm not saying a guy, but guys are per- yeah. portrayed as grumpy more often than we are. Um, yeah. You know, somebody had an uncle who was just full of beans, you know, just absolutely full of beans. And, and he was outspoken and he was this and that. And if he came back to his family and they knew it was him, they would say, oh, there's Uncle Joe. What a guy. You know, he was so unique. But if Uncle yeah. Joe came back to somebody that lived in his house or lives in his house now and he's, you know, kind of grumpy about not being there or maybe they're, you know, redecorating that he doesn't like, they're going to think this guy is a horrible guy, you know? Mm-hmm. So it, it's, it's all kind of in perception and understanding, but yeah. the, tr- the true hateful people, I, I, I kind of agree with you. I, I don't think they're going to come back and, you know, turn into um, wonderful people next time Amen. around or even the next two or three times around. Yeah, I uh, agree. And, you know, I don't even know. I, I just wonder. I mean, really, are they allowed to come back here? Does, I don't know. That's, I would that's, hope not. 
I know. Is Those it, are questions so how do you that I, 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 you know, I've never even really taken it as far as I could probably and asked, okay, what, what's up with these guys? You know, what, mm-hmm. I don't know. That's a very good question. That would be something that I would like to have an answer to. So if you ever do take it yeah. that next step, please let me know because, okay. you know, All right. you hear, you know, there you hear was about a, it. Yeah. Boy, it's interesting. I haven't thought about this book forever. There was a book, remember many years ago, maybe you saw it, maybe you didn't, uh, by, there was a, a guy named Pat who uh, channeled a, a spirit named Emmanuel. Do you sure remember the, it was called of. the Book of Emmanuel or Emmanuel's right. yeah. Book, I think, or something uh-huh. like that? Uh-huh. God, he had great answers in there. I wonder, I bet you, I would think that he would have dealt with uh, Pat Rodegast. I can't believe I'm even remembering these names. Um, Really, Echo, did you just remember that? I think I did. All right, I'm going to write that down because I'm going to go on Amazon and just check and see it. Because Emmanuel, uh, he was such a cool spirit, and people would have, you know, sessions with him and ask him these kinds of questions. And he always had just really cool answers. And um, I bet you anything he covered that. So anyway, okay. I'm sorry I'm getting sidetracked. but that's No, don't. Pop- it's, an, it's an interesting point to ponder. It really is. Uh, yeah, because it was book one and two, Emmanuel. Yeah. I kind of remember it in the back of my head. I'm going to have to now get nosy and look at it, too. Yeah, yeah. All right, so you um, do you ever travel back to the other side? Not like when you went with your mother, but because that was for a specific reason. But mm-hmm. uh, and and you went back, you know, the, your first time. But do you travel back and forth um, to visit, maybe for no reason except just going there because it's nice over there? Or are you allowed to do that? You know what? After I had that experience, I was really depressed for about three days. And I came to the conclusion, and I said to God, okay, don't let me go back there unless I get to stay. Because it's way too hard to know what it's like over there and then come back here where it's so heavy. And um, so I, you know, I think, well, according to my dreams, it's, feels like I go over there to visit people, but I am not, can I say I'm not conscious? Because when I wake up, I actually know, wow, I was just on the other side. But Mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not consciously doing it anymore. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Going out of body and just, you know, your body goes and you fall, your consciousness follows, but that's about it. Yeah. All right. So you talk about the different communities. Um, mm-hmm. You know, heaven is full of communities, and each one reflects a different reality. And the consciousness yeah. which we hold determines where we go in heaven. Mm-hmm. But once we get there, okay, we have our own consciousness, we have our own world around us, for lack of a better way of putting it. Yeah. Um, can we visit other communities or do we not yeah. know that they exist or do we kind of have to stay where our own reality lies? No, honey, uh, you know, okay, like an example would be, um, I always think of like an old farmer who grew up a uh, uh, hardworking German, you know, went to church every Sunday, maybe a good Catholic. And, and so his idea of heaven is that everybody's going to be a good, hardworking German Catholic, okay, (laughs) and uh, have those values and, and, okay, and so that's his idea of heaven. Well, when he passes on, he will probably go to a community, community just like that, okay, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean he has to stay there because he's going to have relatives that are going to come and hang out with him and say, hey, you know, um, you know, this isn't all that there is. Heaven's a really big place, and, and there's all these different communities. And um, he may say, no, I don't want to know about any of the other communities. Or he may say, yeah, let's go. Let's, I want to know what it's all about around here. So mm-hmm. if people are open to having a different reality, they can certainly go, oh, yeah, they, and they do. You know, each that's one thing I saw was that each uh, community has a classroom where you can go in and, and find out, okay, what is the consciousness of this community? What does this community believe? Oh, okay, these are um, 
oh gosh, I, um, these are, this is the Jewish community, okay, oh, and this is the Native American community, okay, and this is the um, African American community. I mean, there's so many different communities, different belief systems on the other side. But see, that's what was so cool about that stairway is that the stairway goes up to the higher levels. And the highest level, which is, well, when I was there, it was a level seven. Now, other I've heard other psychics talking now that there's level eight. I've heard some people say there's, a, you know, level nine and ten. Um, what I saw with level seven was that's where we all have the same reality. And uh, it's like uh, the Garden of Eden to the max. It is just an absolutely beautiful place where we've gone through all the different communities, all the different belief systems, and now we understand our oneness with each other and our oneness with our creator, and we live in that place. Perfect harmony. Yeah, totally. Total, total, total. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Now, you're talking Mm -hmm. about loved ones coming over, and I was reading an article not long ago that said as soon as we enter the spirit world, we're greeted by loved ones, which is, you know, pretty much common knowledge in in our circles anyway. Mm -hmm. But the article said sometimes the loved ones who greet us are not necessarily our relatives from our current earth life. They may be family members from previous lives who have been without, with us um, throughout our soul's evolution. And, you know, I had never thought of that. Yeah, honey, that uh, is true. Yeah, it, it is true. It's kind of mind-boggling, and it, it explained that we would recognize them then. But, you yeah. know, we always think, okay, well, we're going to go after Aunt Sarah and this and that. Yeah. Not thinking that how many lives before have we had families that, you know, that's kind no. of mind-blowing in a way. Yep, it's it's a it's a big group of uh, usually there's a um, a big reunion. Sometime, unless the person's committed suicide or if the death was a really long process, the soul might be very very worn out and just need some R and R. But uh, oftentimes, usually within the five day period after death. Um, working around the funeral. And, you know, that's the other thing that's cool is that, uh, you know, when we pass away and there's usually a window of time between 24, mm, first 24 hours is it's real easy to still communicate with that soul and see how they're doing and um, watch them, you know, go into the light and then reunite with some family members. And then after about 48 hours, then it's, it's almost like the door closes, and then they rest uh, and get ready for their own funeral. And what's very interesting is, you know, we think about, oh, I wonder if she's at her funeral. It isn't just the person who died that comes to the funeral. It's the whole family system uh, mm-hmm. that have passed away. They all come because they can see everybody they get to see the whole family together at the funeral. And so mm-hmm. it's not just the deceased person that comes to the funeral. It's really fascinating when you're able to see it, you know, from both perspectives, from mm-hmm. like the, the like when I go to a funeral, you know, I'm, I'm there with all the living people and talking, but I'm also looking for the deceased person. And, you know, you can always see them there. Um, and a lot of times they're there with family members that have already passed on. And everybody's having such a great time. The deceased are having such a great time because, oh, my gosh, look at little Billy. You know, look at how big he's gotten. And, oh, my gosh, <laughs> I haven't seen her forever. And, you know, it's just, it, it, it's really cool. And you just kind of just wish people understood this, that, um, you know, all of your loved ones are here. It's it's really cool. I, it was so sweet the other day. A friend of mine, um, his mom passed away on uh, last Sunday and uh, or Saturday. I think it was Saturday or Friday. And yeah, Friday. And they had the funeral on uh, Monday. And it was interesting uh, because he he is 
the funeral was out of town, and so he sent me some pictures. And he sent me a picture of her in the coffin, and she was dressed in a black dress, and uh, she looked very nice. And um, But I saw her soul later that day. I tuned in to the funeral just to see how everything was. And I mm-hmm. saw her, her soul at the funeral, and she had the prettiest uh, cream-colored dress on, and she had these little white flowers in her hair. And she was so happy um, that she was out of that body that she had suffered in for the last two years. And um, and her husband who had died, he was there. Her son who had died, he was there. Uh, the grandpa and grandmas were there. Wow, it was a real big family reunion. And yet, to those people on this side, you know, like everybody was dressed in black, and it was really a sad occasion. And... It's like, gosh, you just wish people could see it from both perspectives. Oh, I imagine so. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got a question from the chat room um, okay. about time on the other side. You know, you hear that sometimes time, like one second there is like a year here kind of thing. Yeah. How how is How does that work? Oh, honey, timing is so weird over there. Uh, <laughs> really, when I, when I took that journey, over there, Marla, I thought I was gone maybe two minutes. And uh, and then I get back here, and it was 35 minutes later. I was shocked. It's like, no, what? And um, it heaven, the timing there is, wow, it's very different. You know, like they don't really have a concept of, uh, today is Thursday, you know, they don't wake up and think, oh, today's Thursday on Earth, or, um, you know, the other thing that's interesting, too, a lot of times, like this lady, she died uh, the day before her birthday, and so everybody said, oh, my gosh, I wonder if she knows that it's her birthday. Yeah, she probably waited for her birthday, and, um, you know, the thing about it, though, is that when the soul when the wait, when the physical body is laying in a hospital bed or in the nursing room in hospice, and you know that last week or two weeks leading up to the death, that soul is out of the body a lot, and mm-hmm. it's not really focused on what the date is or um, what time it is. They are they're. There is something, though, about the timing. I recently heard from a spirit that the time of death is as important as the time of birth, which makes me really curious. Like, why? Why? Yeah, really. You know, it's like, why? Uh, Does their astrological chart continue on? Is that a new birth for the soul? I mean, could you do up their chart, you know, um, according to the time of death? And would that give you an idea of what their life is going to be like now on the other side? You know, my mind just gets so fascinated with all of this. And I was very surprised when that angel said to me, because this this lady who just died, she... And this other lady I knew was in hospice. I knew three people that were in hospice at the same time. And all of them just really lingered for a long time. And I was just, one day I was just talking to God about, okay, what, what is it? What, what, mm-hmm. why? And that's when a voice said to me, the time of death is just as important as the time of birth. Mm. Which is just well, really... It's- it's it's the dichotomy of opposites you know birth and death are the probably the two most important things that we undergo um so that's that kind of makes sense to me this was so interesting my mom okay my mom died on october 4th and um her but her birthday was uh july 23rd all the time and so I think it was last year um, on her physical birthday, I said to her, uh, well, Mom, today would have been your 84th birthday. 
and um, and I heard her say, "No, honey, my new birthday is October 4th." You know, that's very interesting because one of the things that Kenny Kingston would say all the time is that people don't die. They just get a new birthday. Oh, he did? Mm-hmm. He, that was one of his, one oh of the things my. that he said quite a bit, quite often. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like that a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I do right? too. Yeah. Like yeah. That's cool. Yeah, she wasn't sad about it at all. It wasn't like, oh, my death day is... No, it was no, honey. My new birthday is October 4th. Yeah. Uh, yeah, see? Another validation. We're having validations left and right here tonight, which is pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, okay. So, so we're on the other side, right? Yep. And yep. suppose there are some people that we wish to reunite with. They weren't there when we got there. Um how do you go about finding them or know even whether they're there or not? Maybe they've reincarnated back to the earth plane. Okay. Now this is, this, this is really a cool answer. All right. And this is just something that I've learned along the way. Okay. So let's say that you die and you go to heaven and the first person you want to see is your grandma. And uh, because you adored your grandma and, uh, but she died you know, uh, let's say, I don't know, 30 years ago. And, um, but she's your first person that you're going to ask for. So you might, and if she's not in the tunnel, you might think, hmm, hmm, I wonder why grandma didn't come and visit me. Well, I'll ask the greeters when you, when you get there. So you get over to the other side. Maybe somebody else shows up. And so they, you go over to the other side and, um, and you might say to your loved one that came to get you, um, well, where's Grandma? I want to see Grandma. And they mm-hmm. would say, well, um, you'll be able to see her later today. And you might say, why can't I see her now? And they might say, because Grandma has reincarnated, but tonight when her physical body goes to sleep, her soul will come and visit with you. Okay, so that's one of the places that our souls go to uh, at night when we're sleeping is that we will go over to the other side and reunite with people that we've known from before. Okay, so, um, oh, God. It's that's a, very cool. <laughs> honey, it's so cool. Oh, you got, I got to tell you the story. This was so cool. Yeah. Okay, so a friend of mine, she was... Uh, overdue holy smokes i mean she was getting bigger and bigger and bigger and so one day she asked me if i would come over and just give her a healing because she wasn't feeling very good and i said you know what how about if i try to communicate with the soul of your baby and see what is taking so long okay Mm -hmm. this was so cool so i'm channeling a healing to her and i just i just said to the guides could i talk to the soul uh of the baby that's going to be born and suddenly there's this female soul and she's on the other side and she says I'm sorry that this is taking so long but she says I am waiting for my grandmother in India to pass away because I am the first one that she wants to see when she passes and she said I'm going to bring her soul over to this side and then I'm going to explain to her that I am about to be born and she said but I just need to spend a little time with her because she has missed me so much Mm. and so my friends like oh my god (laughs) and um, so you know, my friend said, well, yeah, of course, do whatever you need to do. And yeah. and the, the soul said, as soon as my grandma gets settled, I will be there. And so it was about, I don't know, sweetie, it was like six days later that, so she was like two and a half weeks overdue. And mm-hmm. I mean, the doctors had done all of their tricks to try to get her to, uh, uh, get the labor going and nothing was working and uh and then her soul came in 
Wow. Now, isn't that interesting? <laughs> I love thinks, that. I know. Whoever thinks about something like that. No, you don't, but obviously it, it happens a lot. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right. So let's let's turn this around a little bit. Now, I know conversely that there are people who are afraid to cross over when they die because there are people they don't want to see. I know. You know, per- and perhaps you know someone. Mm. Their soul can tell. Okay, so that's partly, partly what's going on in, the, in, in that week or two leading up to the death is your soul is out there talking to the people on the other side. You're saying, I don't want to run into George, okay? I don't want to have anything to do with George. Everybody on the other side is totally cool about that. They're not going to try to say, oh, no, forgive George. They're not. No, they're not going to push you to see somebody that you don't want to see. And so they'll even say to George, you know, she's not ready to see you right now. Uh, She'll come and see you in her own time. And it's like, okay. And um, so that, that is, that's pretty much taken care of by the elders on the other side. There's greeters um, that, uh, you know, welcome people into heaven. Like, you know, for people who have lived and died a lot, they don't have to have somebody in the um, oh in the tunnel to help them over the other side. A lot of old souls, when they're done, I mean, they shoot out of the body. They just shoot right over to the the light and they go in. And it's kind of like, hey guys, I'm back. And uh, <laughs> there isn't this need to have, you know, have somebody help us over. So it's different for everybody. But really, honey, you know, that's the thing. People people say to me all the time, well, I don't want to run into my ex-husband. I hated him. You know, it's like right. you don't have to. You do not have to. Uh, he's not going to be part of the grieving committee. So, yeah, that's, that stuff, is that, that gets taken care of. So we can mm-hmm. pick and choose who we play in the sandbox with up there. That's right. Nobody, yeah. Nobody's forced on us, which is no. good to know. No. Good to know. No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's okay, really man. cool. Honey, they, you know, the thing is, they, they really try to make our transition as easy for us as possible. We're the ones that, you know, like this lady, she she told her son, uh, I'm so afraid to die. I, I just I, I just don't know if I've lived a good enough life to get into heaven, which is really sad. But that was her belief. And um, so no amount of... You know, everybody trying to convince her that it's going to be okay and heaven is a nice place and God's not going to judge her, all that stuff. She really had to work through that, and I think that's why it took her so long to die. Yeah, was- and then it takes it takes them a long time. Sometimes they just will not transition over because they're afraid to go over that. This is mm-hmm. something we talked about on my show last week. Um that they're afraid to go over because they think they're going to either be sent to hell or, you know, stuck in purgatory, purgatory forever. And um, it it must be really hard sometimes, difficult to get through to -hmm. people who have that mindset that Mm -hmm. they're going to be punished. They're having guilt, you know, they, they, you know, stole a penny one time means they're going to, you know, be in hell forever. Exactly. Yep. So do do counselors come down and help those people that are kind of sitting yeah, there do. with a case of the guilt and not yeah afraid to move? They do. There's you know there's uh, really nice people on the other side who oh they they're very aware of uh, oh like this lady you know okay we need to go talk to her and they might send I saw a picture about a week ago before she had died I saw a picture of her husband who's been dead for a long time and he came and he was talking to her about, you know, you don't need to be so afraid. It's really a, a wonderful place. And, you know, it's not the, the place of judgment that you think it is, but she really struggled with it. It's like, yeah, well, that's what you think, but do you know for sure? So yeah, our loved ones, they, they do try to communicate to our soul, try to help our soul not be so afraid, but you know, that's what a lot of the earthbound spirits are. Is they're just so afraid to go over there, so they just stay here. Mm-hmm. That's, that part's a shame, you know, but eventually oh. I guess they do. But again, time doesn't mean anything to them, so they could be here 
you know, our time for 50 years afraid to go over, but in their minds, it's a blink of an eye. So, mm. yep. you know, that's where it goes back to that. Um, as a medium, when you're talking to spirit, are you talking to them? Have they come down on the earth plane? Are you traveling up to astral plane? Where, where or do you meet in the middle somewhere? You know what, sweetie pie, that's a good question. And, and the answer really varies because sometimes they will actually come right here to my office and just stand right in the office and talk directly to me. Other times, uh, they don't. They aren't, they can't come to the earth plane. You know, the elders have said, no, you're not strong enough to go yet. Uh, it might be too emotional for them. And so they are on the other side, but then you just, there's like a, uh, at least for me when I do readings, and if the soul is is staying on the other side during the reading, there's always this uh, room that I see where they go and they're on one side of the glass and I'm on this side of the glass and we talk. And usually they'll say something like, you know, I'm sorry I couldn't come there directly, but it's still emotional for me to come there and... Uh, or I've had some souls say, uh, like mothers who die and they have children here, it's like, I'm sorry, but I, I just need to stay over here. I'm trying to let go of my children. And it's very hard for me when I come into the earth's energy. Um, and sometimes we just kind of meet in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. It is like um, um, when I do a meditation for my students, I'll have them visualize you know just going up higher and higher past the clouds higher and higher and then uh there's a really beautiful grassy area where i want them to go and and just sit down and and just kind of stretch out and relax and okay now your loved ones from the other side someone that you really miss and love dearly is coming to meet you in the field and i've seen this field in lots of uh just lots of readings I've seen this field where it's almost like it, it's it's a I don't know it's a nice safe meeting place for everybody and and then when they're done talking they just turn around and go back up and then I just turn around and come back down mm, yeah it's interesting I like that and, and you know because some people think that when we cross over we can't come back down and I kind of think that and I might be wrong, but the minute you cross over, most people go straight up and and mm-hmm. get there, um, mm-hmm. and then you know come back for their funeral or hang back. But I, I always kind of think you check in and then you come back. That's kind yeah. of my way of thinking. Yeah, um, we can. We we definitely come back for the funeral. Some souls don't. Again, it's the, usually the ones that have been really heavily drugged or uh, uh, if. Yeah, you know, I've some I've seen some folks who are very, very, very old, and they were really, really, really sick for a long time, and their soul might stay on the other side for a while, and then they will view their funeral later. It's kind of like watching TV; they can do that later, yeah. and um, it just depends on how on how um, vulnerable they are, and if. If they can handle it emotionally, which is also another important um, thing to discuss is, you know, a lot of people have the idea that the soul doesn't have emotion. And I I have no idea where they ever got that idea because the soul is full of emotion. And so for some of these fools, fools, for some of these souls, um, it's very, very hard emotionally. They're, They're in deep grief over the loss of their life or um, over not being able to be with their living loved ones. And so some souls are really stuck in grief. And then the the advisors will say, the elders will say, no, 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 you know, we really recommend that you you stay here until your heart has healed. And then at some point you can go and visit your loved ones. So it's different for everybody. It but is. yeah, we can come back. You know, that I thought that for a long time that oh, once you go, you know, you're kind of locked into heaven, but no, they come and go. No, I'm coming back cuz I got a lot of places to visit that I didn't get to so far. You know, <laughs> I mean, I'm making up for lost time. I got and, this. 
<laughs> Speaking of time, we are running short of it. So before we get knocked out of here, um, where can people get in touch with you for readings or to find your books or learn about your classes and all oh, that good honey. stuff? Oh, honey, that's a good question. Um, you know, I do have a online psychic development class. I'm gonna it's yes. the next one starts in August, I believe. Um, they can go to my website. I have a calendar on there that uh, pretty much lets folks know what I'm up to, if I'm traveling, if I'm going to be in their area. Um, I've got Facebook pages. My website is echobodine.com. Um, gosh, books, start. you can find them all on <laughs> amazon.com. Uh, New World Library is my one publisher, and then Hampton Roads is my other publisher. So the books are e- just, real easy to find. I've got a I'll store on the You're on Kindle, website. too, by the way. Yeah, that's Your right, honey. Can be getting yeah, on that's... Kindle, so for people who, yeah. that's good to know. Yeah. Very good to know. All right, I'm I'm getting I'm I'm feeling the hammer on my head. So we are going to go. So I want to thank you, but you have to come back. I've already gotten two requests in private chat saying you need to come Aww. back, and we need to pick up where we left off. So we will okay, do that. Honey. One we'll with the memory. In. Holy smokes, girl! All <laughs> right, we'll pick up where we left off. Yes, we will. So thank you, thank you for coming back for a visit this time, and again, we'll we will do it again. Okay, sweetheart. Thank you. Thank All right, you. you take care, and I want to thank everybody for listening into the show tonight. And until next time, everybody, blessed be and merry meet again. Good night. This has been another edition of Stirring the Cauldron with Marla Brooks. Be sure to tune in next week at the same time for another great guest and more cauldron staring. Any rebroadcast or other use of this program without explicit permission is strictly prohibited. Copyright 2014. Moonlight Hall by Kevin McLeod. Licensed through Incompetech.com. <laughs>